In today's video of the latest trade talk leading into the NHL trade deadline, we're talking about the Montreal Canadiens, the New York Rangers, as well as the Edmonton Oilers. Could they have finally figured out a way to trade goalie Jack Campbell? Plus, Corey Perry's officially signed with the Edmonton Oilers. We have lots of other news updates, including some injury updates, players on waivers, and could Patrick Waugh be soon adding a familiar face to his coaching staff? All that and more coming up next. So welcome back to another video here at Top Shelf Hockey. As I mentioned, we have a variety of NHL news and trade talk to take a look at here today. Uh, first up, we do have a couple of players on the waiver wire today. We had a, a move both in Edmonton and in Montreal to create a roster spot. Uh, the Edmonton Oilers today placed forward Adam Ernie on waivers. Uh, that will be to create the roster spot necessary for Corey Perry. Uh, so if he clears, he'll be going down to Bakersfield in the American Hockey League. Of course, he could get picked up. We'll find that out at 2 o'clock Eastern time tomorrow. And the Montreal Canadiens also uh, have centerman Mitchell Stevens on waivers. Now, that one is a little bit more confusing. They have him on waivers, uh, expected to be demoted if he clears. And they have recalled defenseman Arbor Jack Eye from the American Hockey League. So, I guess there's uh, some talk and question marks, I guess, on who is going to be their fourth center. Um, we'll have to wait and see what the plans are. I'm not sure if there's something else in the works here for Montreal or another, even if it's internal, like what the, the adjustment or the move there is going to be. Of course, we are going to talk a little bit further about Jack Guy later in the video, considering his name has been mentioned recently by Elliot Friedman, uh, by the Habs getting some, some calls and some interest in the young defenseman. So we'll find out tomorrow afternoon if either of these players are picked up on waivers or if they indeed Clear, of course, one of some of the couple of the bigger news stories here in the last couple of days. One, Patrick Waugh becoming the new head coach of the New York Islanders after uh, Patrick was uh, replacing Lane Lambert, uh, who has coached there for the last little while after taking over from Barry Trotz. Of course, we got word today from NHL reporters, which has been disputed by the Islanders themselves and Lou Lamarillo. There was reports that Patrick Waugh was adding an assistant coach, one of his old colleagues from the Quebec Ramparts, Benoit de Rosier. Uh, and now the Islanders decided to even put out a statement disputing that fact just a little while ago this evening. The Islanders' uh, social media account on Twitter had it posted that they have not hired Benoit DeRosier, although he is slated to meet with general manager Lou Lamarillo at a future date. So it looks like he probably will be joining the staff, but not as of yet. And you know what Lou Lamarillo is like with his secrecy and things getting leaked out. I would not want to be the one who gets... Um, caught, you know, passing on any information uh, that way. Um, hard to say. I, hopefully that doesn't impact the decision, but it sounded like uh, was uh, Cutley from the Ramparts was a slam dunk to join the team, and now maybe it's on hold. We'll see what happens once we find out more on that situation. And, of course, Corey Perry being the other fairly big news story here today. I did post a video to the channel earlier, but just to quickly recap what happened was Corey Perry now is officially a member of the Edmonton Oilers, signing for the remainder of the season on a one-year deal, a league minimum 775000 But there is some performance bonuses added to this contract as well. Uh, according to uh, the uh, Cap Friendly and Puckpedia sites, they show uh, 325000 in bonuses available that he can earn 225,000 of which is just from a 10, um, 10 games played. That's all he has to do to hit that one. The other two is broken down to 50,000 a piece and it, it's related to the Oilers um, winning playoff series. So if the Oilers make it to uh, winning at least two rounds and parries into at least half of the games, he'll get 50,000. If the other bonus built in is if they win three rounds and he plays in at least half the games, then he would get another 50,000. So we'll see. Obviously, the 10 games play part shouldn't be too difficult. Essentially, if he makes all the money, he could get upwards of 1.1 million. So not too bad, really. Considering it out of the 775, he'll only earn a prorated amount of that for the remainder of the season since, um, you know, we're already halfway through. Some other news and notes around the NHL, including some other roster moves and injury updates. 
The Philadelphia Flyers today confirmed that uh, young forward Bobby Brink has been sent down to the American Hockey League. They want him to be able to play more minutes and get a bigger role uh, than he's been getting at the NHL level, so they feel that's best for his development currently. Uh, the New York Rangers have returned young defenseman Matthew Robertson down to the American Hockey League after being recalled. Uh, the Winnipeg Jets uh, today did give an update on Mark Shifley. He has been skating. He was at the morning skate today, but he was in a no-contact jersey, so not quite ready to return. But obviously, the fact he's skating is promising and was, uh, you know, obviously a good sign, but a little ways off here just yet. Uh, the Vancouver Canucks also confirmed the defenseman Carson Soucy does have a hand injury and he's going to be out four to six weeks. So that's certainly not good. Uh, the Senators may have some injuries as well after the game at the Flyers on Sunday. Uh, Travis Hamannick did uh, get hurt early in that game uh, and was out for the remainder of it. So it looks like he's going to miss some time. And also in that game, Dominic Kubelik missed a game dealing with a Minor, they called it a minor hip issue. So we'll see um, if those two continue to be out of the lineup or what their status will be. We'll have to wait for updates from the Senators here. as They do play tomorrow against Montreal. And, of course, they have their uh, moms with them on the moms trip. So we'll probably get a better idea of things tomorrow when they have their morning skate. And, of course, as I mentioned, in Montreal, they've uh, recalled Arbor Jacki after uh, creating a roster spot, putting Stevens on waivers, uh, Zach Cassian, who longtime NHLer, uh, of course, played with the Oilers, played with the Canucks, started with the Buffalo Sabres, uh, had announced his retirement earlier this year after going to camp on a PTO but not getting a contract. There is now some speculation that there is a possibility he may sign in Sweden. Um, I know he was sounded like he was done with pro hockey, but um, we'll have to see if that's actually the last of Cassian or if he will emerge over in Europe and play in Sweden. We'll uh, have to wait and see where that goes, but his career might not be over just yet. We'll have to see. Uh, Connor Timmins, defenseman for the Maple Leafs, has received a fine as well. He's been fined $2,864 for cross-checking, which came against the Seattle Kraken last night, uh, doing battle with forward Brandon Tanev. Now, another fairly big rumor that's been going around that we talked about, I think about a week to 10 days ago, was about the Boston Bruins maybe getting back former captain Patrice Bergeron. Would he come out of retirement and play the rest of the season, um, signing maybe close to the NHL trade deadline? Uh, he himself had uh, spoken to the media here in the past couple days and has disputed that possibility. He says that he is not making a comeback. So, um, obviously, I don't think he would come out and confirm it if it's not a done deal and ready to go anyways. But the fact that he even felt to address it tells us it probably is a false rumor and it's not, not happening. But certainly, uh, we'll have to wait and see if we do hear any more about that moving forward. But for right now, we'll consider that um, something that's not expected to actually end up going down now as i mentioned we have a variety of trade talk to take a look at let's start with the new york rangers i saw some reports uh that the new york rangers are certainly in great shape when it comes to the standings but certainly you know our, our team that i expect that chris jury is going to want to make some additions to to uh, obviously try to make a push for a deeper playoff run uh obviously a couple of years back they got into the playoffs for the first time in a few years did some damage had a couple of wins and then last year they took a big step back and lost to the double well, this year, uh, they're obviously doing great in the standings and looking to build upon what they've had here in the past couple of seasons. Uh, certainly one name that they've had on a deadline acquisition uh, not long ago, it been two seasons back, was Frankie Vitrano. Now, Vitrano's having a heck of a campaign with the Ducks this season. Uh, does have a little term on his contract, though, however. And there is apparently interest in the Rangers organization to have a reunion with Vitrano should they be able to work out a trade. Now, of course, no given here that the Ducks want to move him. It's not like he's a pending UFA or anything of that nature. He does have some term. Uh, he's having a, a career season. Like, he's already got over 20 goals like he's on pace to probably score close to 40 at this point if he keeps up what he's been doing now with the term on his contract the ducks do need to have some veterans around to help with the young players they do need to have some guys who can put the puck in the net and have a few vets around for other reasons too including leadership so no guarantee that they want to move a trano the other thing i'd caution teams on is sometimes you get guys that find the right fit and have a career season they get traded to sell high and then they don't duplicate it because it's not the same fit. It's not the same people. It's difficult to, you know, 
for some players especially, that take their skill set to a new team and have the same level of success. So we'll have to wait to be seen here if they do end up having a reunion or if Vitrano has moved at all. I would suspect, given how his strong season has begun here for him and the Ducks, that the price tag will be high. Uh, so hard to say. I don't know that the Rangers would be able to acquire him without giving up a fair bit more than they did last time around. Now, as I mentioned, a couple other other teams, including Montreal and Edmonton, take a look at. Um, Elliot Friedman made mention on his podcast today, and this is not the first time this has come up, but we talked about it a bit yesterday, but I wanted to expand on it here today. But the future of Arbor Jack Eye in Montreal, it's also fitting, like I said, that he was recalled today by the Habs. I suspect that he's been recalled uh, because of their game coming up tomorrow with the Ottawa Senators. They probably want to add some uh, muscle in there um, of somebody who's willing to fight. Uh, we've seen him do battle with the Sens in the past here, recent past. Um, Zach McEwen had a good game against the Flyers. I would suspect he's likely going to stay in the lineup. And I'm sure that this is kind of their way of responding, so to speak. As Elliot Friedman and Jeff Merrick talked about in the latest 32 Thoughts podcast, which actually came out earlier this morning, uh, there's lots of talk around Jack Eye's name. He's getting a lot of attention. As Friedman said, a lot of teams are calling Montreal wondering on his availability, given the fact that he's been in the minors for an extended period of time. That was not really expected when it first went down, and here we are. But now he's been recalled. It's hard to say how long that's going to last. Will he get a good run in? Will he end up you know, playing a couple of games and going back to the minors? They very well might be recalling him just because of the team that they're playing. Maybe they see it you know, important to have him in their lineup against the Senators. And maybe after that, he'll go back down. We'll have to wait and see. But certainly, Montreal and the future of Robert Jack has been getting a lot of attention. There have been some talk, including Friedman this morning on the podcast, saying if Montreal wants to move him, um, if Montreal wants to move him, and there's no guarantee they do, at this point, they're getting a lot of calls on his availability. So they're certainly probably talking and thinking about it a little bit just because of the nature of what's coming through. Doesn't mean they want to do anything at this present time. However, the team that Friedman makes mention that he thinks would be a perfect fit should they do decide to make a move would be the Philadelphia Flyers. Now, the Flyers and the Habs uh, obviously have history and trades in the past. It's been a little while since they've connected with one. And really, could Jack I be a member of the Flyers? It's certainly a possibility. Freeman himself said that obviously the young defenseman's um, character coming from there, he can just see that Flyers would have been a team that did call because he said there's definitely confirmation that teams were inquiring on Jack I's availability. He suspects the Flyers are 100% one of those teams. And at this point, you know, he wonders that if he's not going to be a have for the future, that the Flyers are like the perfect match for him. So we'll have to see where that goes. So we'll see the future of Arbor Jack. I, I don't know that we really think that the Hams are looking to move him. It's just a case where he's been in the minors, getting attention from teams. Teams are calling Ken Hughes of Montreal, wondering what their plans are. If something comes along that they feel like they have to, uh, you know, consider that maybe something happens. Otherwise, it probably won't go too far. Now, in Edmonton, there's reports from Frank Valley on his daily face-off show today uh, that he live streams Monday through Friday, saying, talking about the fact that the Oilers, uh, now that they've been able to add Corey Perry, and of course they're getting Dylan Holloway back from injury, that the forward depth would be in a lot better shape now. So he feels that now there's actually... Because of the addition of Perry and no assets having to be given up to do so, that they very well might be in a much better spot to pull off a blockbuster trade in the trade goalie Jack Campbell. Now, of course, Campbell still has like three years remaining at $5 million a piece. It's a lot of money. It's a lot of term. And it's a lot for, you know, a, a player to be sitting at home or sitting down in the minors with too. It goes both ways. But at the end of the day here, they were under the impression that, they were certainly you know, going to have to pay a big price tag to move Jack Campbell based on all their trade conversations leading up to the deadline thus far. Everything that's been talked about for moving Campbell is quite expensive. So he's basically sitting in the minors trying to find his game to see if he can generate enough of a you know, view from the Oilers brass that he gets recalled, and then we'll see from there. But obviously at this point in time, um, you know, his future is, is uncertain at best, but Jack Campbell could maybe now be dealt given the additions of uh, Holloway, 
as well as Corey Perry to their forward group because the forward depth will be a lot better. There's still a possibility they may want to add a blue liner, but it certainly makes things a lot easier when it comes to, uh, you know, maybe paying a price tag to move Campbell along. Clearly, you know, in Campbell's case here, um, it's not going to be cheap. They're going to have to add an incentive, whether it be a first-round pick or, you know, an intriguing prospect to another team. And at this point, the fact that they were able to add a few members to their forward group without giving up anything, um, you know, by trade, that gives them more to work with when it comes to a trade. And maybe moving Campbell's contract is more important than anything else that they could actually add to the team. Maybe just adding some cap flexibility is greatly what this team needs. They can make other moves afterwards from a different cap perspective altogether. So we'll have to wait and see where this goes. But right now, it's looking quite possible that with uh, what Sarah Valley is reporting, that you know it could be a case of Campbell actually moved instead of recalled and giving another opportunity. But it's not going to come cheap. We know that for sure, and obviously he's going to have to, uh, you know, get something here figured out in the interim because in Campbell's case, you know, right now he's sitting in the minors. What can Ken Holland do? Uh, is he going to give up his first-round pick and a prospect to a team to take this Campbell contract on? It's difficult to say, but that's likely what the asking price is going to be, and now that they don't have to give up a bunch of that type of assets to acquire some forwards, then I fully suspect that's likely where things are heading. Now, back in Montreal as well, there's also talk from Frank Sarah Valley that the Montreal Canadiens are expected to likely get a first-round pick for Sean Monaghan. He feels that by the time the Hams are all said and done with Monaghan, that would be an acquisition that grants them two first-round picks. you got to remember the Flames gave them a first-round pick for taking him off their hands in that last year of the contract. In the case of Sean Monaghan, um, Sarah Valley feels he's played strong enough and well enough to generate a first round pick going back as the trade. So by the time we're all said and done, could Montreal walk away with two first round picks and just for taking Sean Monaghan off Calgary's hands, obviously they got one for taking him. They could generate another one for trading him. That's what Sarah Valley expects to happen right now. There's multiple teams linked to Monaghan. Uh, we're looking at the, uh, the Oilers word team that were mentioned, but now with the addition of Perry and return of Holloway, that seems pretty unlikely, but Vancouver is a team that's been mentioned as well. The Boston Bruins are out there. The avalanche, there was some talk about the Rangers, but I don't think that's going to be overly likely. Uh, I really think the other teams I mentioned are, are the more likely scenarios, especially the Canucks and the Avalanche, probably being two of the teams, in my opinion, that kind of make the most sense. So we'll have to wait and see. I do expect Montreal to be busy here, and we'll hopefully get some clarity on the future of Jack Eye, as well as Monaghan, what kind of price tags they're likely looking to get here um, in the very near future. So let me know your thoughts on all the latest news and rumors down in the comments. We'll discuss further. If you're new to the channel, make sure you subscribe and stick around. We'll keep you up to date with the latest news, rumors, and analysis of all 32 NHL teams. Thank you for watching, and I'll catch you next time.